celebrating 13 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Todd Howell. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. These are great stories about great people whose lives serve as proof that anything is possible, but it also is my excuse to talk to people that I think are incredible. And I think you're incredible. And every week as you watch this show, I want you to realize that anything is possible, to see and seize the possibility in your life. I believe in you, and I want you to know that. Uh, another person to join us to shine a, a spotlight on possibility is my friend Todd Howell, who is the chief meteorologist at WBIR Channel 10. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Thank you. I like you, <laughs> right? And so I like you too. <laughs> thank you. We have the same birthday. Which right. I found right. that out too. That's awesome. So here's the thing: when I see you on television, the likability factor is huge. I mean, you kind of resonate a likability uh, that is that's wonderful. So I wanted to talk to you about the man behind the weather, right? right. So let's start here. I'm gonna name a place. Okay. And I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind, the very first thing that comes okay. to mind. Gaffney, South Carolina. Peach. Peach. Have to. Used to have the <laughs> South Carolina Peach Festival there. And, uh, that's my hometown. You were born in Gaffney, South Carolina. Yes. 1964. That's it. What was it like growing up there? It was, uh, it was great. Small town. You know, all the, uh, the nice things about growing up in a small town where you know everybody. Sometimes that can be, you know, not so nice, you know, everybody is so close, but I love my hometown of Gaffney. Um, I treasure the friendships I made growing up. Nobody really knew where Gaffney is, and so. Right. Where is it geographically? It is in upstate South Carolina, up Interstate 85, north of Greenville and Spartanburg, and there's a big peach the side of the interstate. That's, o that's the only it's way the only, people only know where Gaffney know. is. And they had to redo it a couple times to make sure it looked like a peach. And, uh, folks will understand that you see it, but uh, you know that's my hometown. Um, I loved growing up there, and you know, a lot. Of, when as we grew up, you know, the feeling was it's a small town. You probably want to, as you grow up, move on and and, and move, maybe move out of town because you know it's such a small place. So that was kind of the trend. But uh, I, I treasure my time growing up there. And tell the tell me about your parents. Well, my, I start with my mom and dad. Uh, I, I grew up and was raised in a wonderful home. Um, my dad worked at Millican Research for 44 years, strong work ethic, uh, and uh, he raised four boys. So God's got a great sense of humor. I'm one of four boys. And you have and four boys. And now we boys. have four boys. <laughs> right. So God is awesome, and he's got a great sense of humor. Uh, my mom and I were very close. She, uh, music filled our home. She played the piano probably on average an hour and a half to two hours a day. So really? I grew up with that. Now, Do you play? Well, here's the interesting story, Hal. Uh, all my boys, all of our four boys play music. They taught themselves how to play guitar, how to play piano without any lessons. What we think happened is the musical gift kind of went through Lee and I, my wife Lee, <laughs> and uh, not, we don't really have it, but our children got it. But it, it's a thing of beauty because we can see if, and my mom passed away at an early age, only 49. Uh, if she were alive, she'd be smiling. And she is smiling from heaven, seeing her grandchildren be able to play music. So if she died at 49, that right. would mean, how old were you when she passed away? I was 23, and that was hard. You remember that day? I remember that day very Let well. Let me tell you about the day that my mother died. Yeah. I was on my way to a production studio to work on editing on this show, mm -hmm. right? And I was driving in my truck, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine was trying to call me. Mm -hmm. And I typically, John Wright is my best buddy, and uh, I typically, when I see his number, I answer immediately, but I decided not to answer his call. For, for whatever reason, I decided not to answer his call. Right. And something happened in that moment. And, and I want to tell you about it because right. I want to know about the day because it was a defining day for me. And I right. want to know about that day for you. Why don't we take a break here? When we come back, I'll finish that story. And I want to hear about the day that you lost your mother. 
This is Anything is Possible. I'm Haller and Hilton Hill. We'll be back with the rest of that story in just a moment. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. Now, I'm a little slow. I'd already been to college for four and a half years. I was a business and marketing major and I was working in sales. But in my heart, I felt like God put a love for weather in my heart at an early age. I loved weather. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. This is Todd Howell. Um, so I was asking you about when your mother died, but right. as a prelude to that, I was telling you my story. Right. So I'm headed to the production studio to work on production. I remember I was sitting in my truck in the parking lot. I was waiting to go inside. Right. Right. My best friend tries to call me. Right. I don't take his call. Right. And then all of a sudden, this violent electrical shock goes through my body. I mean, I just, it was an electrical shock that was real. Wow. I felt it. Right. I felt like somebody plugged me into one of those high power lines. And I remember I just, I shuddered like that. Right. Immediately after I sh shudder, mm -hmm. my phone rings again. It's my sister. My mother lived with my sister and her husband. Right. And it's, it's, the, it's the, um, the number from their house. Mm. And so I answered the phone. Mm -hmm. And when I answered the phone, it was my brother-in-law, not my sister. In the background, mm -hmm. all I could hear was my sister wailing. Mm -hmm. And my brother-in-law said, she's gone. And I said, when did she pass? And he said, about 60 seconds ago. Wow. So when you lose your mom, that's a, that's a real thing. Yeah. And to lose her young, and to have the music stop at the house. Yeah. yeah. Would you, t do, are you willing to talk about what that was like for you? Yeah, I, you know, interesting. I, I, was, I was out of, I was in college, uh, actually, and actually just graduated from college and uh, was out of the home. Um, and uh, I was actually a, sold typewriters and an office equipment store. And so I'm in my office, um, and this is uh, back in October 1988, and uh, uh, I, my mom had been sick back and forth. Um, Lee, my, we were my wife now. We were uh, not engaged yet, but uh, dating. We got had, had a chance to go back and forth and see my mom. And uh, but she had been ill, battling breast cancer. Um, but this day, I'm in my office, and I get the call from my dad, and uh, just wept. Uh, you know, just put the phone down. And I said, I'm sorry, Dad, my, my emotions just kind of took over. My mom and I were very close. Uh, and, uh, you know, but how, here's the, and that's the sad part, she was only 49 years old, died of breast cancer. Uh, but the, the beauty of her life, and what I realize more every day, is she lived life to the full. She was only 49, but she had 49 wonderful years. You know, uh, years filled with music. Years and filled joy with music. And she laughter. filled it, laughter. She she raised four boys. She, <laughs> she did well. <laughs> right. She did well. And so that's what it's not. We're not promised tomorrow. You know, God says make the most of your day every day, and you don't. We don't know how long we'll live, but make the most of every opportunity. You don't know. Uh, how long you, you have, and my mom made the most of every day. She lived a life full. She was a terrific blessing. She left a legacy to all now, of me and my brothers, us boys. So we honor her right now. What yeah. was her name? Carolyn Howell. So I don't know if that was a transition point for you career-wise, right. but I know that you attended the University of Georgia, right. and we forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I met my wife. That, right. Hey, something right. great happened right. in Athens. Right. Right. I understand you got your master's at the University of uh, Mississippi State. That's right. Went back right. and studied meteorology. But, That's but right. you were a business administrations major. That's right. You were in business sales. That's right. But your love was weather. Exactly. Yeah. After your mother passed, did you make the decision, I've got to live my life to the fullest. I've got to do what I really love. Yeah. It was honestly how... I was working at an IBM office equipment dealership selling typewriters and then the PS2 personal computer uh, came out. It seems like it forever ago, but really wasn't that long ago. Uh, I came to a crossroad. 
um, in uh, in 1990. That that's two years after she. That's passed, two right? years after she passed exactly, and it took a while. I didn't grieve properly at first. It took a while because a lot of times you just don't want to deal with yeah. it, and you don't feel like you can handle it. But God and His timing helped me. But basically, I came to a crossroad. What do you really want to do? Now I'm a little slow. I'd already been to college for four and a half years. I was a business and marketing major and I was working in sales. But in my heart, I felt like God put a love for weather in my heart at an early age. I loved weather. I loved snow. And so in my heart was weather. Fast forward on a sales call, I went by a weather service office and I just, I'm just going to check into weather. If there are any schools out there, offer a degree. The gentleman said, no, we don't really have anything. He pulled up in the drawer and he had, he said, we'd have one place, a pamphlet, and he gave that to me from Mississippi State. They had a broadcast meteorology program that was a two-year program for a master's. So I said, well, uh, I was married. Lee and I were married. This is B.C., before children. And so we have to remember everything like that. But we prayed about it and decided to go back and to get my master's in broadcast meteorology. Felt like God had put that love for weather in my heart. But how there's a scripture, and I became a Christian in 1987. So for the years and the timing, this is very important. A year before your mother passed. A year before my mother passed. Right. God was setting me, my eyes, my, my vision straight for what He wanted to do in my life. That's the most important thing. So after I was saved and, 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 and studying the Word and His Word and what I, it was speaking to me in my life, Psalm 37, 4 is a scripture. Which says? Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. That was a promise, number one. It is conditional. I was trying my best to seek God and His wisdom for Lee and I and for our family. And I felt like I love weather. God, I know you've given me a love and a heart for weather. I feel like this is what you're calling me to do. So we went back to meteorology school, got a degree in two years, worked in Tupelo for a year on the weekends. It was poor people. <laughs> you're talking about on-the-job training. Seriously, I was my first weather cast. I don't even remember what I said. I was so nervous. Um, you know, knew just enough to be dangerous on air. Uh, and, uh, but somehow got through that and somehow got an interview with WBIR in uh, May of 1993 and I came to Knoxville in June of 93. After the tornado and after the blizzard of that year, so uh, yeah. I love weather, probably not as much as my wife. My wife is a weather, she, she's watching the weather all the time. Is that right? right. I watch your weather though. And just hearing you tell me the story of your mother and her life and the music, mm. right? Yes, sir. There is kind of a musical joy to the way you do weather. Mm. I, can, I can see the joy. I can tell you love it. Mm. Thank you. I, I, Wenton Marcella said, uh, you don't love it if you don't know a lot about it, right? right. So you wanted to, to learn it. What is it about weather? You know, Halloran, I look at what you do. You're very passionate. You're great at what you do. God has called you to do what you do. With weather, it's simple. It's simply with me. I feel like this is what God has put a love for weather in my heart. I love it. It's, a, it's an affirmation of I feel like I'm doing what God has called me to do. So there's great peace and joy. Just knowing you're doing what you're Just supposed to be doing. Just knowing what you're doing what you feel like you're supposed to be doing. That's exactly right. What has weather taught you about God? He's in control. And life. <laughs> yeah. What, you know, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, you know, predicting weather, forecasting weather. Well, first of all, God's in control. He created the heavens and the earth. Obviously, we see it. We're evidence of that every single day. So all those things apply. Um, I, it's fascinating. It changes. It's variety. One of my favorite scriptures is, His mercies are new every morning. Now, Halloran, that's what, here's why that's very important. I know what I said in the forecast the night before. You know what I do every day? I get up, I roll out of bed to my left. I open the, first thing I do, open the curtains, seriously, and lift the blinds. If it's not a, pretty much exactly uh, what I forecasted, or if it's way different, close the curtains, close the blinds, hop back in go bed. Back to bed. Here we go, let's do it again. You know, Groundhog Day, maybe, right, right. maybe it'll be different. Uh, but, but seriously, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge uh, doing weather and it's a privilege uh, to, do, to talk about something that God created and it's fascinating. Every day is different. I love the variety. I love the challenge. You know, my boys, we all played sports. You know, life, there's a lot of lessons in sports. You're going to have bad days. Right. Every day is not going to be great. So it's how you handle the bad days. 
it's Need here's the forecast. What do you do with it? Exactly. I'm telling you what's coming up so you can dress for the weather. Exactly. Right. right. Let's take a break. My my guest is Todd Howell, uh, chief meteorologist. Yeah. Uh, I love having you here today. Thank this you. This is awesome. You. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Coming up. It's how you adapt and handle adversity. And when things aren't going well, that's the time where victory is, is there. This week, our Home Federal Community Spotlight is on Hope Resource Center. Did you know that Hope Resource Center provides medical services and educational resources to women and men in need of a safe place? To learn more or get involved, visit investinghope.com. Todd Howell is my guest on Anything Is Possible. And by the way, every week as we have these conversations, what I want you to know is that I believe in your possibility and I believe in you. Uh, that's why I do what I do. Uh, I love encouraging people, and this show is about possibility. And uh, you're going to meet some great people like Todd Howell. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for My uh, your transparency and telling me uh, your story. You make it easy, Hal. So thank you, because I'm not really uh, <laughs> used to doing things like this. I'm having a great time. Thank you. You're a family guy. You love your sons. Uh, they play sports. You love your wife. Let's talk about having four boys and being <laughs> one of four boys. Yes. Right, so you played sports growing up? I played sports growing up. Already though, my boys were much better than I ever was. What uh, did sports do for you? Uh, it did a lot. Basketball was my sport. Um, really? I love basketball. I played tennis too. Um, you know, sports, it teaches you to overcome. You're gonna have days in life, in, in, in sports, you're not always gonna win, you're gonna have adversity. And a lot of you know, folks and your viewers, we, we all know this, but it's, it's very true that it's how you adapt and handle adversity. And when things aren't going well, that's the time where victory is, is there to be won. Anybody can win and, and, and do great when it's, things are going well and having a great day. It's when uh, you know, life throws you that curveball, and, and you see it all the time. I love sports, you see the momentum. You know? You see the shifts, the psychology in yeah. sports and the game. You know, why did, did one team all of a sudden get better skilled during the game than the other? No, a lot of it is confidence. Is that, is that what you wanted for your sons? Yeah. And did you want to use the vehicle of sports so that they would have to deal with life's weather? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, because of the life lessons. I, I tell you, and this is just my personal belief, again, I'm a very simple person, but. Halloran, God is great. And I think he wants us to do great things for his glory. And I felt like, and you know, our boys have been able, I see greatness in them. Mm. And I'm biased, obviously, but I know no, no, God no, no. has great let's, things for let's, them. Let, and, let's just pause there for just a moment right. because that is the essence of, of what this show is about. It's exactly. just this, do you realize how powerful it is that your sons will watch this interview, and I'm sure they know it beyond this interview. Now we'll get really nervous. Right, but <laughs> they'll watch this interview and they'll see their father saying, I see greatness in you, right? I bet your father saw greatness in you. You know. I know your father yes. sees greatness in you, right? He sees greatness in every one of us. That's the heart of God. And that's, that's what I get excited about. So let me, let me do something with you right here sure. uh, before we get away. My dad did something. It, it took him about 51 seconds to do it. My, my <laughs> second oldest brother asked dad what final words he would say to his kids. This is about two years before he passed away. Right. My father refused his request because he said he needed to prepare. He right. always prepared. So he goes in the next room, he spends a couple of hours, and he comes out with one sentence for each of his five children, Right. right? Franklin. Hold on, hold on, hold out. Wow. Byron, keep looking up and then go where you're looking. Roland, wow. you can make it if you believe. Terry, and she saw this the first day she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Right. He looks into the camera and he says, Terry, there's power in prayer. Wow. Halloran, he says, balance, Halloran, balance is right. the secret to success. Let's take your four boys. Wow imagining the greatness that you see in them right. and the possibility that you see in, in them. And to our viewers, you latch on to this because this will be a lesson in possibility. Yeah. 
would you speak a sentence, call their name and speak a sentence over each of their lives? Wow. I'll start with the oldest and then go, uh, Walker, you're an overcomer. Since the day you were born, God has helped you to overcome. And he's called you to great, for great things for his glory. Davis, you have the heart of God and God is calling you to do great things for his glory. Nolan, from an early age, I believe God is calling you to, to worship him in spirit and truth in music. And Stuart, our youngest, a lion. God sees your heart and he loves you very much and is calling you to great things. All four of my boys, uh, I'm very proud of you. And I should say, Howard, I have four boys and a wonderful wife. It all starts with Lee. Um, I'll be honest with you, she is Christ-like. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like. I see Christ in Lee. She is uh, unselfish. She is giving. And uh, she really sets the tone in our home of a Christ-like spirit. And I'm so thankful that I have her as, as my bride and a wonderful example uh, for our boys. Thank you for asking me that because that's such an honor and a privilege to be able to speak life into our boys. And, and for folks out there, you know, God sees greatness in you and wants us to do, you know, great things for His glory. My life story is summed up in three words, Howard. I need Him. Wow. Todd Howell, thanks for coming by today. Thank you. Proof positive My that pleasure. anything is possible. Thank you, Howard. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.